I have decided to include a lesson that focuses only on the area of triangles because it helps us when we need to do the proof of the proportionality theorem which is going to be coming up in the next few lessons because I know for a fact that when I was in high school I didn't truly understand what they meant by the area of a triangle and how some triangles have similar heights and things like that. It, it used to confuse me and I know it confuses some of the students that I've tutored. So let's let's go through this. If we had to look at these two triangles, so let's look at triangle ABD and then we're also going to look at triangle DBC. Now if we want to know the ratio of their areas, so let's say we want to know for example the area of DBC or triangle DBC, I should say triangle, triangle, not like that, DBC and triangle ABD, or if I want to divide them like that, sorry, then we all know that the area of a triangle is half base times height. And remember that this base and height must be perpendicular to each other. So for DBC, the green triangle, we can take its base as 10. So we can say half and then the base is 10, but we don't really know its height, okay? The height is not this one, it's not that one. What we mean by height is from the very top straight down to the very bottom. So that's what we mean by its height. So for now I'm just going to call it H because I have no idea what that is. If I look at the triangle ABD, I know that its base is 5. Now what would that triangle's height be? Well, I know that I need to go to the highest point on that triangle, and that's also going to be here. And then I need to just go, I need to draw a line that is perpendicular to the base. So it doesn't mean I'm going to try go down this line. That's not the height. That's not the height. I need to go perpendicular to the pink line AB. But AB can extend if we need it to. Okay? So then I can draw a line going straight down so that these two form a 90 degree angle. That doesn't mean that I've extended the base, it just means I've made a little dotted line over there to help myself identify the height of the triangle. And so can you see that the green triangle and the pink triangle have the same height? Because I used to think when I was in high school that the height meant these slanted parts over here. I didn't like the fact that you could get a triangle that looks like this but then when you want to work out its height, it's this part over here. Because that for me didn't touch the triangle and it just felt a little bit weird. And I see students get a bit, oh, like, they don't, they're not really comfortable with that idea. But the height doesn't have to physically be one of the lengths in the triangle. You just need to go from the top and then you just need to draw a line that is perpendicular to the base. And if you have to extend the base to make that possible, then that's fine. But that doesn't change the base's length. And so what, we what I'm trying to show is that these two triangles have the same height. So the H's cancel, even though we don't know what the height is. The halves cancel. And so we're simply left with 10 divided by 5, which is 2. And so the green triangle has double the area of the pink triangle. And this whole idea of using the base as this one and then using the height as from the top down like that so that it's perpendicular that actually makes perfect sense because let's say we were looking at this car okay and we are busy designing a shopping center and we would like to know how high we can build because we, we, we're going to build an underground car park and obviously we need to know the height of some cars so if someone asks you what the height of this car is, you're not going to say, um, okay, well, we're going to have to start here and then just move like that, and that'll be the height of the car. Or you're not going to say that you could maybe start here and then move down the side of the car because there's a rule that says that you always have to use one of the sides. Okay, That's the same as with this triangle over here. To find the height of this triangle, you don't necessarily have to use the length of the triangle itself. You want to know the height of the triangle, okay? So what you would do for this car is you would obviously go from the top and you would measure right down. 
that is the height of the car okay it's between this line over here and that line over there that's your height so with a triangle if you're measuring the height it has to go between this line and between that line over there that length is your height not this curvy piece or this slanted piece that's going down the side because you want your height and your base to always form a 90 degree notice there's a 90 degree over here well and as I was recording this my grand just sent me a message saying that she wants me to show the students her new car um, so some of you may have seen her driving around she often drives around in Cape Town and then she'll sometimes just take an hourly trip to Durban to Johannesburg all in the same day um, that's what my grand does for a living she just drives around in her Batmobile car but okay no that was just a joke but if we had to ask about the height of this car over here this is a good example how would you find the height of this car because if you were designing some type of underground parking if you wanted to make sure that this car could fit underground then you're not gonna measure from here to here for example or from here to here what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the highest point now let's pretend that it wasn't this point over here okay that's I actually wanted it to be more let's pretend that it's this point over here so to measure the height of her car you would have to go downwards like that over there but notice that that line isn't even a part of it's not even touching the car okay so that is the same as a triangle that looks like this to measure the height of that triangle you just go downwards like that okay so the to measure the height of a triangle, I'm just going to say this once more before we turn back to my car, my little beetle. Okay, that's also a joke. But to the height of the to measure the height, you don't necessarily have to use an actual side length in the triangle. Okay, I hope that has cleared all of that up. So back to the beetle. Now the next concept we're going to clear up is the following. If I had a question like this and I wanted to work out the area or the ratio of the area of A B E and then the area of ACD then clearly no matter how you look at this these two triangles are not gonna have the same height think about the big green triangles this big car and the pink one as this little car they're not gonna have the same height no matter how you look at it okay but then something else will happen because they are tucked inside each other over here then they share a common angle. Now we know from grade 11 trigonometry that the area of a triangle, if you can't find the perpendicular height like we just looked at previously, then you use this other formula, which is a half A, B, sin C. Sorry, usually these are small letters actually. Don't want to confuse you. So remember this triangle, this formula can be used if you don't know the perpendicular height of the triangle or if the two triangles don't share the same height. But then Kevin, why are we going to do trigonometry now? I don't feel, I don't want to have to use sin of some angle, but look what happens. If we look at ABE, then we have to say half of Now remember the two sides that you use over here and over here are always next to the angle, and we're going to use angle A. So that means we're going to have 3 times by 11 times by the sin of angle A. Now, I don't know what angle A is, but I'll just say sin A anyways. Then for triangle ACD, which is the green one, I'll say half. Then its length is going to be 11. And then 11 plus 12 is 23. But it also uses angle A as a central angle, so that's sin A. Then look what happens. That cancels, that cancels, the halves cancel, and the halves cancel. And then you're just left with quite an easy sum over there. So in grade 12 for Euclidean geometry, anything that has to do with area, the two triangles that you are using will either have common heights, those typically look like this, where we can see that they share a common, or they, 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 they could potentially, they have the same starting point or the same base point. The base lengths might not be the same, but what we can definitely see is that their heights are the same. Remember, from the top to the bottom, that's the same. We're not interested in the slanted parts, we're looking at the height. Okay? Or 
you might have a question such as this one over here where this one triangle is slightly smaller but they are tucked inside each other at one particular angle and so we use this formula but then that common angle is the same and so it cancels out so in one a question like that the heights would cancel out so you don't actually need to know what the height is and in a section like that the angle would cancel out and so you don't actually need to know what the angle is